Hello, and welcome to Nameless Studio. I'm your host, Tyler, and this week we are going to be working on a new small 5 by 7 acoustic piece, the theme of which is going to be a kind of lesser-known Marvel comic book character that was sort of reinvented um, in the 80s by Alan Moore, uh, that comic book character being uh, Miracle Man. What we are going to be focusing on is going to be the logo of said character, which may seem like a bit of a kind of simplistic artistic sort of thing to adapt, but we are going to be taking elements of the character, their history, their backstory, and sort of uh, bring those into the overall piece. So it's going to end up being a very deconstructed um, and uh, much more involved piece than just a straight up um, adaptation of a logo. So with that in mind, let's get started. Okay, as you can see, I have already put a couple circles down just using a compass um, in graphite. And now we are going to be sort of filling in the most inner circle here with um, the Neo Color 2 pastels made by Karandosh um, as our base layer. Um, again, as I said before, with the base layer with encaustics, you can really use whatever you want. It's a great mixed media um, medium. So you can use graphite, you can use colored pencils, you can use these Neo pastels. Um, you could even use acrylic paints, oil paints, um, if you let it dry long enough. You can even use sort of um, um, paper and collage elements, so long as uh, once you get the wax on there and start using the heat, you don't burn it. Um, but the great thing about encaustic is always that it's a highly mixed media sort of medium, so so many ways you can go even from the start of it. But we're going to keep it pretty simple here and use this sort of base yellow um, that sort of forms the background of the Miracle Man logo. Um, so I just kind of put that on there. And then again, the, the, the Neo pastels are water soluble. Um, so I just put a little bit of a wash on there to, to allow it to sort of breathe a little bit. And so now we're going to put our, on our clear coat, which again was just the um, encaustic medium um, that comes in a pellet form. So we're going to let, again, the, the, the griddle heat to 200 degrees, keep the brush warm as we're brushing it onto the substrate. So I'm always putting the brush back onto the griddle for a second to let that sort of keep that, that warmth and that heat. Um, and normally uh, in the past few times you notice that I only put down one layer of this clear coat. We're actually going to put down two layers um, on this piece, mainly because we're going to be focusing on a lot of layer building. So I want a kind of a thicker layer to start that gives us a little bit more leeway um, with sort of uh, curving things back and, and reworking things a bit without having to go straight back down um, to the substrate. So this piece I did put two layers of that clear coat on there. In doing so, you can see that it's, it's, it's quite a bit uh, bumpy and textural at this point. So we are going to go ahead and um, use our butane torch. Again, you can use either a butane torch like I have or a heat gun, electric heat gun, um, to fuse your wax layers together. I prefer the torch only because I feel like it gives me a little bit more control over my actual heating elements. And so we're just going to take some nice slow licks across the surface uh, to even out those layers, make it nice and smooth. Um, and we'll give us a nice uh, rectangular over easy egg look once we're all said and done, now that I'm looking at it. Um, whenever I do that first sort of wash of heat, I always take a good hard look at my surface because sometimes there can be little elements of brush or other things that sort of get embedded in there. So sometimes you need to take like a little exacto knife just to dig out little little spots that might uh, hinder your overall thing. And then if you 
you want, you can always stick another little firing over, over top of that to help balance it out. So the next color we're going to be using here is going to be um, a very opaque blue. And um, that is a color um, that we are going to thin out just a little bit um, with some more encaustic medium. Again, I buy them in the pellets, so it makes it much easier to sort of understand how much of it you're you're putting onto the griddle in order to melt and and use with the base color itself. It also comes in a big old brick, much like the the pigmented colors, um, but I find that a little a little a little obtuse to use. A little bit more difficult to really uh, figure out how much you're using, and also it takes a bit longer to melt. So we're just going to kind of uh, enforce the circle element that we had with the yellow at this point with this blue. Um, keeping the brush very hot so that we can have some nice even brush strokes happening. The hotter the brush is towards the substrate, the smoother the movement you have between them. Um, if the brush is not hot, you'll get a lot more sort of texture and sort of bumping and gripping uh, between the brush and the wax itself. So as we have it here, I put down that blue. If you notice, I did not fuse that blue layer with the butane torch. I actually want this blue to be able to chip up pretty easily. So I did not fuse it whatsoever um, to the base coat that we had down before. Normally you would, um, just to create even, even just a little bit of a bond between the two. And down the road you'll see what sort of uh, effects this will take um, once we really start playing with layers um, and which ones are adhering more than others. But for now, understand that I did not affix that blue layer whatsoever um, to the base layer. And now I'm just taking an exact knife and kind of smoothing out some elements. Um, there were some sort of build-up spots where the brush initially hit. Um, that I just want to smooth out so that we have a, a more even surface um, between the next few things that we do. And I always like to let the uh, the substrate cool quite a bit before going out with the exacto knife. The cooler it is, uh, the more it's going to sort of chip away, and and uh, I seem to have more control the the more the the cooler the piece is. The warmer it is, you can definitely slice through it like butter. Um, but if you're looking to really just uh, pick off a layer, um, like the blue layer here. Uh, I, I would recommend letting it really harden and cool off quite a bit. Um, so now we're going to be taping off a bunch of elements. Skipped over that because you do not need to see me taping for a good portion of it. And now we're going to use our third color, um, and that being a brittle cadmium red. Um, the red of the M's um, of the character's name. So we're going to thin it out just a little, um, but for the most part, we want this color to be very opaque. Um, it's gonna create a sort of the real draw point that we have going on here. Uh, and the tape itself will, will create a nice bond um, and separation between the waxes so that once I peel it off, we will get a nice clean line um, where I'm painting over currently. It's not like that top layer is going to sort of break off um, with the tape. It actually creates a, a quite a nice line there. So I thinned it out just a little bit to make coverage easier. If it's a little thinner, sometimes movement of the paint can be um, a little easier uh, to push. So we always add just a little bit of that to, to enforce kind of the, the movement of the paint rather than just getting it short little strokes, because sometimes it can be difficult to get nice movement with, uh, with the encaustic medium. So we're just kind of filling in all the little nooks and crannies here, because we can always go back in with an exacto knife or something else to pull things away. Um, so we want every little bit filled as we can. So now that we've filled the bit that we've taped, we are going to fuse it ever so slightly. I don't want it very fused, but I do want it to adhere just a little bit. So if you look just really quickly, 
going over and 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 quite far away. I'm about a foot away with the with the with the torch at that point um, from the actual surface, just to kind of smooth over that top layer, get rid of any sort of um, texture that we have going on over the brush stroking to get it nice and even. But other than that, we don't want um, too much fusion between layers. Like I said, we want a lot of play between all the layers that we're going to be building on throughout this process. And at this point, we're going over with just a little bit more Neo Pastel, and this one being kind of a darker blue, um, because we are going to be adding quite a few layers to this that are all going to interact a little differently. Um, so adding just a little color to this layer um, will enforce just a little bit more texture um, once we start building on top of it. So we're just going to take a brush to it and give them nice thin washes. Most of this is going to be going to be we're pulling it right back up. Um, but we do want some elements that uh, read as sort of deconstructed elements after we pull off the tape. So in pulling off the tape, you see we have a nice clean line um, where the tape stops and the end cross-ex begins. So we are going to go ahead and uh, pull off a good chunk of this tape and see what our result is. All right, and so this is where we're going to end for today. As you can see from the thumbnail of this video, we still have a long way to go before this piece will be considered finished. So with that, I just wanted to take a moment to talk a little bit about layers. Um, the couple layers that we currently have down, by the end of this, are going to be uh, heavily obscured and erased. Um, and that is the case for a lot, if not all, art. Um, there is going to be layers um, that, as a finished and final product, you're not going to see whatsoever. Um, but just because layers have either been erased or obscured or completely covered, does not mean that they do not inform the finished piece, um, either visually or mentally with the artist as they are continuing to uh, build to that final piece. Um, and that is something to um, consider both in your art practice and in life. We all have many layers um, that we choose not to show uh, the outside world that we might have even forgotten about ourselves, that they're even there. Um, but they are, and they do inform the overall presentation that we give the world. Um, so in these trying times, try and keep that in mind, um, both in life and in art. So with that, um, I've been Tyler with Nameless Studio. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to see more like it. Until next time, be seeing you.